Hello and welcome back to the OGA Rainbow Six Pit North American Qualifiers. I'm Stern Up and joined once again by Demo for our second play day of North America. Yes, ready to go, James. Already number two for NA. It doesn't seem that long ago where we were having, of course, our other NA play day. And we're back already. And it's going to be another long night. We hope it is. You probably don't. You want to get to your bed. I know you're tired. Mm. It's, it's long days for you. I'm not that tired. And I think, you know, this will be a pretty interesting play day. This is definitely mm -hmm. going to set the kind of mark for going further forward. Yep. So, you know, I, I'm quite interested in these matchups. Our first matchup, of course, is going to be Sonics versus Oglas. And uh, I think that could be a pretty interesting match, considering the positions these both teams are both in. Uh, unfortunately, Oglas had a couple of roster changes. We'll get into that later when we get into the game as well. So, you know, they won't be bringing their full five here. Sonics, obviously, as well, have their relegations match coming up on the 1st of November, if I remember correctly. So, potentially, they do not want to show everything here, and they might not be taking this matchup too seriously. But either way, whichever the team gets through this first match goes against Roke, who, as you'll know, weren't looking that great yesterday. Well, the last play day. You look at Sonics, and it's, you know, they had a really rough season. Well, they had a little bit of glimmer of hope in the kind of later stages. Orgless, CL team. Again, not looking too good, and that's kind of been the trend for, I think, many CL teams is that they haven't kind of shown up and expected to because Obey just kind of dominated. Uh, but that is our first match. You look luminosity, and Disrupt will be our second in rise versus Drac to finish off the night. And then there is still, of course, EG and Shrug and Obey and BD, uh, BDE to come up as well. So make sure you stay tuned. And we have everything kind of laid out. Even look at the, the top half, SSG Adventure Force being one of our first quarterfinals. And now we need to see who Rogue faces. Yeah, and, you know, this this top half, I think everyone's kind of expecting SSG to push through, but Rogue, definitely big contenders here, although, again, weren't looking that great against Akami, but they are definitely one of the better teams. Akami's just a bunch of gods, let's they, be real. Yeah, clearly, clearly, but they weren't yeah. able to get through, so They're it's kind of unfortunate good. for them. But, yeah, we'll see how this first matchup is going to be going down. We'll get into the map bands in just a few seconds and see exactly what map we will mm -hmm. be going to for this matchup. Um, I get the feeling that Sonic's are kind of just willing to play whatever they want here. Although, we do know that Villa is definitely one of their better maps. Yeah, Villa definitely could be an option for them. If you look in the side of Orglis, you know, they've only had two wins this season. So, pretty lackluster. They've actually had the lowest amount of wins out of any team inside of Challenge League. A lot of draws, though. Five draws for them. Uh, you know, they took a win on Cafe not too long ago. That could be a map that could be open for them. And also, Bank was another one that they won on. So those are really the only two we can go off that they've had great success with. I could see, like, Coastline perhaps being a map tonight. You know, they've played a lot of Coastline, had a couple of draws on it. But overall, I think it's going to be tough for Orglis to really break down Sonics in their kind of wide map pool. Sonics have done decently on Coastline in the past as well, so potentially we will see that go through. Um, of course, they drew against Luminosity in the very first half of Pro League um, during during the regular season. So, you know, Sonics, definitely, that's an option for them to go to Coastline here. But I get the feeling that Sonics, again, they're kind of just willing to go wherever they want. So, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at what, you know, mm -hmm. what that's going to happen down. And we'll see. The first ban is going to be Coastline, so we're not going to see that at all today. But there's a lot of options here for Sonics. And you say they do have quite a wide map pool. So... Potentially, it's going to be up to Orgles of where they actually want to go here. Yeah, that's a good ban, though, from Sonic. So they've kind of looked at the recent history in Orgles. You know, they've looked okay on Coastline. There's some good points to kind of take away from it. But overall, whenever a team does kind of favor a map, if you take away that crutch, it means Orgles now have to play out of their comfort zone. Uh, but there's still, you know, a lot of maps there. Even Consulate's a map that they've played quite a bit. They've got a couple of draws on. Uh, still a couple of losses as well, but it's better than nothing, huh? It's better than, like, Conan and Villa against Sonics. Yeah, it is true. And, you know, Cafe as well is also a map mm -hmm. that both of these teams are pretty comfortable with. Sonics have had a pretty some pretty good ideas for Cafe before, and during their TSM match, you know, they they were looking pretty rough during their attacks in the first half, and then the they beat Rogan Cafe? Bit better. They did, they did. So, you know, there's there's definitely there's definitely options here, I would say, for Sonics to try and bring this in. I know they have a lot of experience as well in Consulate, in Challenger League when they played it last season. So, you know, there's there's a lot of options here for Sonics, and, you know, that's not really what we're looking at. And, yeah, Orgles banning out Villa, I think that's to be expected here. Yeah, that was the kind of go-to for Orgles, you'd have to admit. Border still being left up as well. And that's always, out of the seven, the one where it can really go anywhere whatsoever. There's never really a clear favor, I feel, for Border. Yes, a team may have the upper edge, but there is always potential. 
We've seen Sonics play a decent amount of border during the regular season of Pro the, League. They beat SSG in their final play day. Yeah, um, and they've played SSG before then as well. They played it during the first half. So, you know, I, I think they do have a decent idea of what border can go down to. And again, and again, like we're just coming back to the same point, that Sonics have a really decent map pool mm -hmm. here. And I think it's really just going to be down to Orgulus to kind of shimmy down to what they actually want to do here. I think one of the better maps for them could be Cafe here. We'll see if Sonics actually want to take that off the board. And yeah, it, this is this should be an easy map ban phase for Sonics, but we've already seen them take Cosine off the board. Orgs has taken Villa, so now Ooh. it's going to be up to Sonics to pick the first map. It's going to be Bank. Okay. So, Sonics on Bank, they haven't had the greatest time. They played TSM on and played A13, they lost. They played against Wreck on Playday 11. They lost as well. So Bank hasn't been a good map for Sonics. Perhaps they've changed some things. Perhaps they know that they could perhaps have a go at Orgles and catch them by surprise. I think a big part of the mentality here is because they do have that relegations match. They want to go to a map that they don't play normally so that they're not having to reveal anything. And whenever they will be going up against Obey as well, that's yeah. a tough team to fight. It is, it is, and you know, they've definitely got a lot to save there, and I don't expect them to bring anything really too new to the bracket here, and potentially Bank could be a good pick against August as well, considering how, you know, unorganized they might be with their mm -hmm. new uh, roster changes. So, will Sequel of House be picked out by Orglus? Um, I'm not sure about that, because I think Sonics are probably one of the better Orglus team, as one of the better, sorry, Clubhouse teams, as most teams in Pro League, you'll see, will just ban Clubhouse immediately against Sonics. No one will take them there. Yeah, they've played very little clubhouse throughout the course of the season. That probably mm. is for, you know, the good reason that they have some things up their sleeves. You look at the kind of dimensions of clubhouse. It's very anchor favored. That's where players like Goddess can really step in as a maestro role and just gun anybody down he tries to push in. So there is like kind of positives in single players that excel for them on that map. Yeah, no, definitely. It can be a really good one. So we'll see Cafe, Consular, and Border as one of our deciders. I feel like this should be a Cafe decider, but it kind of depends on what Sonics want to do here, because I... Yeah, well, we'll have no idea. It's going to be Orgles who ban out of Border, so I'm not going to let them go there. And as you, you said, they had a good record yep. on Border, so that's a good ban from Orgles. And now it's going to be into Sonics. And these are both pretty good maps for Sonics, I would say. Cafe and Consular, they both have a lot of experience on both of these maps. Cafe is a little bit better for Oglet in this situation, I would say. So we'll see exactly what they want to do here for Decider, if we do indeed get there, because I think a lot of people are expecting this to be a pretty clean 2-0. Mm -hmm. It is going to be Cafe, so if it gets there, I think Oglet have a little, a little bit of a decent chance, but... Yeah, they need to win on bank mm. for Oglet to actually pull away. I don't see them taking club. I even think yeah. it's a stretch to see them take bank, just because Sonics and you think about the kind of roamers that they have now with Gonfi and Slabin, who we know have done sure, many of the things sure. that over in EU. Cafe, I kind of feel would be like a really good map to see, but I don't think we're going to get there. Yeah, well, we're going to be heading into map number one, and we'll see exactly how that is going to be going down. It is going to be bank. That's going to be Sonics versus Orglus here in our first matchup of NA Play Day number two for the OGA Rumba 6 Pit North American Qualifiers. Okay, now we move on to the bans. Please give me a hard breacher. That's all I want. You want to there see needs to be one. I think Habana ban definitely could be good here. Let's see what Sonic's want to do. Um, a little bit of background here, of course, because they are going to be playing their relegations. It seems like they might kind of like throw about a bit, but it's going to be the classic Super Thatcher ban. I know Super, I know he loves a Thatcher ban. I know he's done it so many times in the past in Pro League. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it just means that Kaid has quite a big thing to say now going in towards the map, and uh, I still want to see a hard breach. Honestly, I, I could see a Maverick being banned here just to really give Kaid the ultimate defense of, you know, literally that basement will be impervious to anything that comes its way. Yeah, potentially, potentially. We will see the Havana ban come out, so okay, you will be yeah, granted your wish, That's, that's basic. That's classic. Yeah, uh, Havana ban's pretty common here on this bank. So this is actually going to make things pretty defender-sided, depending on the defender bans. I'm going to guess that Orgles are going to want to take Cade off the board here, although Maverick is still up, so this shouldn't be too bad for a Cade pick, but we'll see what they want to do, and their ban will be Echo, so none of that remaining. Sonics, I would guess, want to take Mirror off the board here, but really it could be anything, because, I mean, anything except Maestro, I don't think Sonics will ever take Maestro off the board for themselves. 
No, no, they need to keep the Maestro. Uh, I can see Valk being banned, but Mira is kind of the common one. So it's a go-to. Nothing out of the ordinary. Very basic for bank. Uh, so since the Habana ban is there, basement should be a really strong defender-sided bomb site. Uh, you really will rarely see teams be able to break it down just because you don't have the accessibility of opening up different hatches to give yourself alternate routes. Uh, I think also in towards like the garage, Maestro is like such a powerhouse of an operator where he can place a Maestro camera, look straight down into the garage entrance so he knows he's safe, and he can play that really long angle that a lot of people go for, and literally you can tap anybody as they walk in towards the bomb site. Uh, so you may notice on Ogles Frosted, there's quite a number of players who are missing. Forceful is subbing in as coach, and we also have Makarov and Timzy coming in to sub. Timzy also subbed in for TSM yesterday during the USN uh, wildcard tournament. So, you know, he's he's been about, but Bravodog and Trippin are going to be here, of course. Trippin, pretty pretty kind of experienced player. Probably yeah. the most experienced player out of this roster. Yeah, Trippin kind of speaks for himself. He does have, of course, that uh, that pro past experience to him. And, uh, you know, I hope he kind of shows up and kind of shows, you know, why he was in that position to begin with. Uh, but it's still going to be a tough one going up, uh, of course, against Sonics. Um, if I'm, am I not mistaken that also that Trippin used to play with them back in Elephant Gang? Yes, he Which did. is what For Sonics used to be. Season 8 of Challenger League, mm -hmm. yeah, he did used to play with them in, challenge, in Challenger League, so... Yeah, Trippin should be kind of familiar with this roster, although it has gone through a number of changes since then. But yeah, you are right, Elephant Gang is more or less the same team. So, we'll see how things are going to be going down. Sonics are going to start things off in the basement defense. And honestly, pretty common setup by them, although they did reinforce the upstairs hatch as well as the open area hatch. Does Slevin have the Titan Killer? I'm assuming so. Ah, uh, he does. Yes, let's go. Let's go. This gun is, is just... This gun is is the gun. It is the gun. Of course, the Titan Killer can slay anything that comes in its past. We've already seen actually a great number of teams have ran this weapon specifically to hold this stairs. We have seen a lot of them go for this hold. There's like so many different ways you can hold these stairs, but yeah, especially with the shield that Slubber has put down in the specific spot means you can't walk past it. You can't like vault over there or anything mm -hmm. like that. You have to destroy that shield if you want to get into blue. We'll see how Orglus wants to tackle this strategy, but if they do want to go for this kind of server push, they need to clear blue stairs and they need to clear that Titan Killer out. So IQ solo pushing jumps oh. in and what? there's the Titan Killer. You don't mess with that gun. You don't do that. That that's not a play. That play made him. That was uh, that was brave. That was very very brave coming out from Magarov. But he's going to go down early on. <laughs> what and was he doing? Turn in four v five. Oh I think my. he just wanted to catch him off guard while Tim's each was trying to push into server. Potentially the Ella was a little bit worried uh, though. But nope. Pfft. Just Ella, again, possesses one of the Infinity Stones in that weapon. Has mm -hmm. the Time Stone. Can go back in time and see exactly what happens. And now oh, slapping. There's another L of mine, so we'll cover him, but here comes the dopamine aid being cooked off, and well they have burned the ADSs, but there's a lot of them. There's but this one is more ADS up still. time wasting utility, that's all yeah. you need to do in these stairs. Yeah, that's all he needs to do. Forceful, however, is gonna find the first pick of the round. Neptune's gonna go down already and nitro off the board, and then aids go through and already. This blue clear coming through. Slevin tries to fight back, but he gets shut down, and Orglus have taken two members of Sonics off the board, and they didn't even clear the shield. But at what cost? They're still Gumpfy in server. Minutes ago, hardly any utility on the side of Orglus as well. Still have the Maverick, but he's trying to work on the main A hatch rather than in towards server. And honestly, Gumpfy should be able to stop everything coming at them in this round now. He is in a perfect position, and you still even have the Maestro in the back ready to go with the Alda. Yeah, Gumpfy's still holding on to blue, and as you say, the Alder can be very powerful, so even though that Sonics are at a man disadvantage, they still have huge amounts of utility up, but they don't have any Nitros. Oh, well, sorry, no, they'll have a Cade Nitro up still, so should still be good. Oh, Gumpfy just gets slammed from the dirt tunnel. However, Timzy picks up that freebie, and it's another one for Timzy on the entry Fragmite. It's all down to Old Man Super to see if he can bring it in. Still holding down with a cage shotgun, just find one goose hose out the nitro, tries to go for the planter now, but doesn't get any kill out of it. Ten seconds left to go on the clock. Oglis need to find this kill, but they'll start to go for the plant. Timzy goes for it, and Oglis take runnable one. What just happened? 
Uh, yeah, it was actually great adaptation for Morgulus to go for the rotation in towards dirt, and that was a quick one they had to make. And it was the correct decision. Whenever you put that pressure on the Jaeger, and probably at that stage for Gumpfy, he's not expecting anyone to go for dirt, because dirt is definitely falling out of the favor for a lot of teams. It's not kind of the meta it used to be back in the day, uh, kind of before like Maverick came in, where it was difficult to get hatches off. Uh, but since that's kind of became a thing, teams have never really looked to dirt. Montagna has completely fallen out of the meta compared to his time where he was taking quite a uh, a big chunk out of that. Teams were banning that operator consistently just to shut down those dirt pushes. And, and Golf, he's not expecting that. It's an off position, and it works for them. That just gave them the entryway. Definitely. I, I really think a lot of that round definitely was on Timsy. Forceful also being able to pick up the entry of his own. And wow, what a disaster for Sonic's already just throwing away in that round. They're going to go back downstairs to a locker CCTV room. But things may be a little bit surprising. I think that bank core site defensive downstairs with a Thatcher ban, with a Habana ban, you would really expect it to be very defender sided right now. They lost Nep very early on, mm -hmm. and that's your pulse player. Generally, that pulse is not used for the killing potential that we know as a free speed and a roamer can possess. He's there for the information gathering. Pulse inside of Gold Vault can see pretty much the entirety of server. It can see in towards the top side of the map as well. It gives you so much situational awareness. It's stupid. Uh, and Nep, him losing that very early on, it just kind of puts Sonics in a bit of a, a blank spot because the only other information they have is going to be out of Maestro cameras. And whenever, you know, Sophia is always being picked up by every single team, Maestro doesn't really have that much of an impact. We also do have Dokubi as well up on the board. So the logic bombs kind of, you could say, are a counter to those uh, evil eyes. So we'll see the rest of this does go down. We'll see what Sonics want to change up here, but. Yikes, yeah, that is not a good round to lose at all for Sonics. No matter what happens now, we can definitely say that Orglis are putting on a show tonight. Yeah, it's not the best situation losing the basement, because that should be pretty impervious. Uh, but then again, we have seen teams work with it on an attack, being able to bring the Maverick to open up a hatch specifically, and still having Fermite charges to go for the default. It can be pretty tricky for defenders. The big thing I kind of think that falls in favor of not having the Habana is that you can go for a pretty solid roam game, because it's not as if, you know, Maverick can instantly open up a hatch. He has to take some time, and whenever he is trying to open up the hatch, he's in a vulnerable position. He doesn't have, you know, the capability of opening the hatch like Habana does and then walk away and try and hold. You have to be constantly there burning, and it takes you a good, like, 15, 20 seconds. Someone could flank you in that amount of time. It's like Pulse, whenever he kind of gets caught up with his Pulse scanner, isn't it? Yeah, no, definitely can. I like what Forceful is doing here with the Maverick charge. He's, he's opening up small holes so that you can keep control of the hallways without really having to overextend and try and open up the entirety of the hatch. But looks like he's going to try and open up this hatch now. And he's trying to open up a little bit. Looks like someone is peeking it just out from below. Forceful's got to be very, very careful about how he opens this up while the rest of his team starts to do the work up onto Blue Set. Sullivan still holding down that same position. The finished guard with the Titan Killer. He's primed. He's ready. He's a superpower player. So, Sonics, they haven't lost anybody yet. And that's great, especially Nap, because they need to have him alive, because that would really help, I think, Super as well, whenever he can control with the mighty Sniper Shock, and that can do a hefty amount of damage. This time around, they have opened up this hatch, so it forces Gomfy now right into the back of the server rack, but he could be vulnerable from such as the Capital. That's why they've kind of switched off the Dokobi. The C4 gets lost by Super, and... What was Fermi or Maverick doing? He's just walking around it. What? <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, I don't want, don't want to do anything without the C4. You can keep it yourself, sir. However, Gonfi is going to get traded up onto Blue and Gonfi, sorry, Slybin got traded, and Gonfi's going to be the only one left in server to try and hold it down. Nep is still pulling it out. Gonfi goes for a play. He gets the kill, but gets traded out by the Capital Fireball. He was completely dead there. I think that was a good play, honestly, from Gumpy. Yeah, the so. Belgian on fire makes it work. And Nep is still alive, and this is what they didn't have last time, is this constant information. So Super, he has to be on top of his game. He doesn't have a C4, however, because he did try and waste that and fragging off the Maverick. Goddess still has that really long angle in towards Garage. That's the reason why Maestro could be a big issue, is because he can hold it with the ACOG. Nep now, not using the information, instead looking for the C4, the drop comes in, and also the cover, and there's Super with a big bad shotgun, fires in through Capital, trying to give cover, Nep has to back on in, and there's the shotgun raining on through, the diffuser is cold on the floor, and Sonics, they win it down to time.
much better round coming out from Sonic's there. Definitely a lot of time denial as well. And Gonfi able to play his life there and get a kill. Yeah. Despite the fact that he gets killed, they're constantly able to keep the numbers even throughout the matchup. And yeah, they're, they're, they're taking utility away from the attackers constantly. Whenever you're getting picks on the attackers, even if you're getting traded, it's still fine. We have the info coming out from Nep as well in gold. So much, much better stuff coming out from them. We'll see how round number three starts to go down as we'll see a staff an open Ooh. area. Interesting okay. from Sonic. Interesting as well to see this with a mirror ban. Uh, yeah, but Clash is typically the go-to operator to choose for these bomb sites because it gives you that kind of aspect off the mirror window because she is pretty much a walk-in version of that. Uh, a little bit more susceptible to different operators compared to the mirror, uh, but they're not going to go for it. Instead, it looks to be a very heavy roam setup where you can see, you know, Jaeger and Mozzie being added into the lineup and also have the Legion because they know it's a very big open, it's literally called open area for that reason. There's a lot of ways yeah, in and those Goo Mines could be great for kind of slowing it down. And honestly, Honestly, open areas, they do take quite a while for the attack to set up. The big thing that I love about what Sonic is doing here as well is that it looks like they're just going to completely reinforce the upstairs because there is no Maverick coming out from Orglus right now. They instead picked up the Jackal. I think because of what you said, they saw the Mozzie and they were like, okay, they're going to do a heavy roam. Let's pick the Jackal. Let's see what they want to do there instead. But no, it's actually going to be an very, really heavy kind of like spread out defense, it looks like. And also from Ogles, they've not really brought too much soft destruction. So even if they do the, get this upstairs control, I'm not sure what good it's really going to do with them. So they have kited the hatches as well. And since there is no Thatcher, those are going to be tough for Orgles to get rid of. Uh, all of the attacks spawning in towards Park Alley pretty much. So I could see them try and go upstairs and clear out the roamers. Sonics will be extending in towards Archives and Tellers, and do they have an extension in towards that from the small office? I, I re I'm, I'm guessing they do, because you would never really cross over this uh, if you didn't have that. So now for Orglis, they need to try and get the early droning phase, and they could try and opt for soft destruction, because there is different areas on the top floor of Bank that you can shoot open with, like, you know, the Jackal Shotgun, for example, and can create some nice murder holes from above, and whenever they can clearly see that they've extended in towards Tellers, they could go into the front desk and start opening up above the two roamers. So, Trip, I'm going to get droned in here above and see exactly what he can do about this. Lots of drone. Oh, oh my. God. Well, this is the most drone I've out. ever seen now of an NA team. Yeah, there you go. All of us are really just taking that upstairs control as quickly as they can. And Trippin slowly crouch walking down. But as I said, this is a very spread out defense. They don't have to hold that upstairs at all because there's not even that much soft destruction. And they know they can't get the hatches. Yeah, they should be able now to move in and start opening up above the teller side of things. Bravo Dog is just kind of patrolling the skylight, holding off flank. Because as we know, Bank, big roamer heavy map. That mozzie does grab that drone, and that will be able to allow Slebin to even play that as a kind of... Uh, sight draw if he wants to, and here comes the soft destruction from above. Breach and charges will be opened up from Sophia, and now Slevin has to move away from the small office. So for Orglis, they know they have the upstairs control. There's tons of time that they can now execute on towards the bomb site, look for the opening picks. They have managed also to open up one of the back hatches, and that will be their main way in to drop down and try and plant the diffuser. Yeah, definitely could be. We'll move into... Just about two minutes into the round now, and Sonic's still holding down pretty firmly. Timzy trying to move his way in okay. here, potentially to try and thermize something open, and I like this lobby take. I don't know about you, Demo. Yeah, this is an intriguing one, because you're now taking a lot of pressure away from the site, and you're specifically hunting these roamers, but how well is your team coordination? Looks to be okay, as I say that. There goes Neptunes as well, squares it off into a 4v3. Super also adds on to it, having that long angle with a shotgun from open area, does rip them to shreds, along with a 416, and Sonics, they just collapse everywhere, and Orglis, yeah, that's a head-scratcher, because as soon as that wall got opened, they just all died. The Forbidden Wall. Really good hole coming out from Sonics, though, and like I really like the idea as well behind that. I think Orgles were a little bit put off with what was going on there as well. That's, that Thatcher ban is really devastating because a lot of like really interesting holes like that can come up from Sonics. We'll see how it goes down to move into round number four. We'll go to a CEO defense coming out from Sonics. And I think, you know, at this point, Orgles should expect a CEO defense mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, CEO is the kind of second pick go-to for teams after they defend the lockers. 
lot of ACOGs you'll find very common on this top floor, and there's three of them for Sonic. Scumphy now on the dock. Guess it's going to be played in Kanto, because that is kind of the go-to position with a shield, and you can sit there and don't really have to worry about anything whenever a banner is banned, because the real way that you can take care of the Kanto position that is right beside the elevators in the top floor is by opening up behind them, but with no Habana to have that projectile, then it just makes Doc a uh, much more of a pesky issue to deal with. Montagna now being brought by Orglis, so it looks to be that they are worrying about physically getting themselves in the bomb site and give themselves that on-site information. I think with Montagna, it should be obvious, I think, that it's going to be a lobby take, and the fact that it wasn't sick pick is kind of, to me, I feel like a little bit of a mistake from Orglis's part that they should have hit that Montagna in case there was any kind of sick pick onto a lesion or anything like that from Sonic's, but they don't seem to be worried about it. In fact, they don't really have that much to deal with Montaigne here. That was C4 from Super, and that's it. Nothing else going for them. So that should be able to cause some issues. So we're kind of expecting Orglis now to have a great headway in towards whatever side they're pushing, because they could go for an open side. That's completely possible. And Sonics have opened up to give Gumpfy a kind of spawn peak angle. Misses that, however, but I'm pretty sure he did catch that Montagna, so they know where the Montagna is coming from, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, knowing that it's going to be a lobby side take is definitely good. I would have liked to see potentially Capital come out from Orgles here just to clear out that Kanto position yeah. that we were mm -hmm. talking about, but it's not going to matter too much with the Herbana ban as well. It does make it slightly harder to indeed clear out from this side, but a lobby take does allow you to be a little bit more coordinated, of course, as well. Also, Sophia can be a great way of dealing with Kanto because you can simply just stun the dock and then just push up and get a free kill because that, that's another thing that we've seen done before. I like the fact that they're prioritizing lobby if they want to play the window game because we've seen before where teams have just repelled the north windows, have no lobby coverage whatsoever and just get picked off by one defender who rotates down. So they're doing their kind of basics right, which I like to see, but I'm not sure how walking up one staircase is going to work for them. And Well, already, Nap, he opens up with the first kill. And that will be the IQ gone, but there isn't really anything that IQ to help Oh, with no. No, forceful, come on. Somehow this little angle is still being worked by Gumphy and nobody's responded. You should see that basically that's open for him to kill you from. Why are you not prioritizing that? It's Why is nobody repelling on the big windows? Why? No one repelling right now. Flashbangs are going to go out into Kanto as well, but Comfy is just not going to get flashed by it. He does get picked up, however, that should be a trade coming out right now, but Bravo Dog is going to shut down Super, and Tripper gets his entry as well. It's all falling apart for Sonics. It's all down to Goddess on the Yiga, playing from Kanto, trying and get some trades here to see where these attackers did go. She finds one, but instantly gets traded out, and Orgles somehow recover round number four and bring it in for themselves. Yeah, they just seen the entry. It was great. Uh, adaptation just to see, okay, Doc, he's so out of position, let's throw the flashes, let's push up, let's get the kill. But Sonic's the cover. Where was the crossfires? Where was the refrag potential? Clearly it was missing. Uh, yeah, CEO losing that in a pretty embarrassing fashion because that should have been a sold round for Sonic's. As soon as you eliminate that big Montagna, which we know they were going to struggle with dealing with whenever they don't have the right operators to kind of get rid of that, the only thing there was the C4. I don't know, man. It was weird. I also kind of questioned the fact that whenever they're trying to push up Banana, why don't they have somebody on the big windows and lobby? I think there was someone not repelling on the big windows, but he was repelling like CEO side. And that's where Nep got his kill from, from jumping out and then immediately getting traded by the Claymore. But yeah, no, not good. Someone should be on that repel on the north windows. We'll see how things start to progress here for Orgles. Let's move it to round number five. And it's looking like the same defense from them for this downstairs area. And Orgles looking to recognize that. Although they have brought the Twitch more often here. I, what do you think about this Twitch pick? Uh, fragging potential. There's nothing really else that you can look at and think. Really? Well, I think that because he was using it before as well, just on the previous round to eliminate the Maestro camera on Spiral. Yeah, but then what's the point of Sophia? You know, Sophia is there to cover the Maestro. That's the whole point of bringing her is to, of course, have the stuns for executes and has a great gun. But more importantly, Maestro isn't really a big issue whenever she's available. And we very rarely see a Twitch drone manage to make it all the way through sight. Rarely, really. Okay, maybe not from the Maestro's on here, but those ADS is on blue. I can definitely see a potential situation where where a Twitch drone just quickly just peeks around the corner and is able to pick up at least one ADS out of that, and that's saving you a couple of flashbangs at least there and a little bit more utility. So nah, Bravo Dog's a fragger. He's a center for the gun. Oh, okay. 
the F2 is very, very powerful. It is, uh, that yeah, switch is mainly Five less bullets, bro. All right, yeah, my bad, sorry. It's not as if it's gonna do anything. And yet, like you know, guns like the, the Titan Killer can run about being un untamable. This is true, this is true. I wonder if he's gonna use the Power Stone this time. And it looks like, yeah, he is gonna try and go for something here, but no. Instantly, he's gonna be taken off the board by Slevin, so that's not gonna work out for him. Instead, he's just gonna have to try and frag out with this. I'm interested to see how they try and clear him out this time, because both times now, they have been able to kill him. Please don't run at him. It's not gonna work. He has the Titan Killer. He knows you're coming. He has the shield, he has the cover, he has everything, but Slevin, don't peek, bro. You're looking good right now. Yeah, no reason for Slevin to really be too aggressive here, although I like the proning to be able to destroy the barbed wire there. Very, very smart from Bravo Dog as Prefire's come down. Trish trying to bait Slevin out to a peak, but it's not going to come down. The other Twitch drone's going to be moved around from Bravo Dog here, but things are moving pretty slowly here for Oglas. Hopefully, Force Holes has been able to do a little bit of work here. ADSs are going to get burned here. Flashbang's going through. Still one ADS open. It is going to get burned now. Oh no! All three ADSs were here! And there we go. Shield is going to be destroyed. There's still an Ella trap there. Slevin should be able to play off of it quite well. There's still an ADS up still. Yeah, he's just lurking. He knows he has all the control here, and Sophia does try and debate that, and, well, gets baited straight into the IQ. But there's Gumphy, actually taking a more aggressive position. Last time we seen him hide away in towards the server, but tried to give cover, did get the frag, but overall, they have lost their server control. Now with a minute to go, this is plenty of time for Orgulus to move in, open up the wall. Of course, they still have their Firma and even the Maverick working on the A-hatch. And this is going to be a rough one now for Sonics. And I wonder if Super, who did turn up the last time they defended this with a bunch of kills, can he do the same again? There's still two Nitros up on the board as well, but only 15 seconds left to go. Oh, oh my good night. god! Good night, Goddess. Timzy takes her straight off the board and should be able to try and go for a plant here, potentially to bait out a C4. One C4 does go out from Neptune's, and unfortunately not going to hit its mark, but Super still has one, but Bravo Dog just runs in and he gets a double kill off the headshots. And Orgloss is able to take round number five. Great play from Bravo Dog on the flank here to be able to shut down the remaining members of Sonics. I like the rotations from Orgloss. They have been on top of their game. Like, even look at the last one where they kind of flushed out Gumphy by pushing uh, in towards dirt. Yeah, it, it's great stuff, and I'm glad to see that they are going for different options and trying to catch Sonics by surprise, who are set up. You know, it's very standard what Sonics are doing, so everybody are kind of aware. You know, you have the Pulse inside of Gold. You have, of course, uh, the Kite supporting that, Maestro inside of Garage. Everything basic. Everybody is aware of this, and they know that Main Stairs is a bit of a freebie. This is great for Oglis, honestly, in this situation. We said about how this should be very, very defender-sided right now, but it is just not. Oglis has taken three attacks so far. If they can find a fourth, I think that's honestly map set and done, depending on Sonic's, how they deal with their attacks, but things are looking so good for Oglis right now. We're going to go to the only site we've not seen so far. It is going to be Tellers and Archives. Yeah, Tellers is actually more favored, more so than the open teams. They're still straying away from that bomb site specifically. But Taylor's is always a risk because there is a lot of things going for the attackers in terms of the destructibility factor where you can go upstairs and literally open every angle uh, on towards that bomb site. There is nowhere you can sit if there's a sledge or a buck raining havoc above you. And it's very simple then just to flush them out and push in and go for the plant with, of course, the amount of damage that you can inflict from the upstairs it, it's crazy and, and it kind of feels if like lobby takes have become a lot more common and teams are really starting to nail the basics off it and basics is simply take lobby move upstairs cover the flank rotations more importantly and then push in via the main double wall and go for an easy plant that's kind of how things plan out for a lot of the attacks so i'm curious to see how sonics will kind of counteract that because they know that whenever orders were attacking from the lobby uh you know even if you look at their open area they kind of expect uh, i think orders to do the same again and that's why they have the upstairs janitor and towards the main ceo cover trying to be provided but playing their maestro up there could be a risky one because if he gets popped your maestro cameras will not be able to you know you're not gonna be able to use the the laser effect for it it's interesting that the mozzie on Gomphy has not brought a Nitro here, so he's brought barbed wire and it looks like, yeah, as you said, we're going to have a pretty heavy roam presence coming out from Sonic here from the upstairs area, but Makarov already going to pick up his entry out to Gomphy and Super's off the board from Bravo Dog. Oh my god, such great entry product coming out from the Twitch and Bravo Dog is just fragging out of his mind. I believe he's 10 and 1 right now. Yeah, you said they picked the Twitch for the drone and I knew he's just a fragmeister oh and god. there he goes again.
5-2, Sonics in the bin. And this looks to be another round for Ordo Sonics. Losing one by one their gunfight. I don't know what Super was doing just lurking below, because that's a risky angle to play in towards Skylight, especially if you know that they're already in that position. Yeah, he started pulsing out from just where that janitor's closet is, but yeah, risky to play there for too long at all. It's going to be a 5v2 now, and they're going to be able to just open up all this floor, as you were saying, just so much destructibility here, as Neptune's going to rotate to main stairs and see what he can do here to try and destroy this attack. He's actually managed to rotate all the way up right now, and should be able to shimmy past this Claymore. <laughs> this is very risky. I think he can get past it though. Oh, no, he's gonna shoot instead though. Tinsy is gonna start to plunder the diffuser now. Nitro is gonna go out from Goddess, but unable to hit his mark so far. Nevis is gonna hop over into Lone Office. He sees one but misses the shots, but does manage to find Forceful. And Goddess finds Tim's. This is definitely very clutchable. Goddess is get caught out and traded, and Bravo Dog is gonna finish things off onto Neptune. So all goes take round number six, and they're 4 2 up on this attack right now. This is yep. horrific for Sonics. Not looking good. 4-2, where really Locker should be your best bomb site. They've lost it twice. You know, you look at the Habana Thatcher combo, that kind of screams defense, have a great time down there. Uh, Sonic's on their kind of defender half for the Lockers. They extended very heavy into server, but they never really got their rewards from it. You know, you look at the both times, they just kind of got picked apart by the great utility usage that uh, I kind of feel the Oracles had going for them, you know, being able to burn literally every ADS they could find, accompanying with nades, and they did bring the Capital out one round for their, uh, I think it was their their second one, but it didn't really do as their much as what they kind of expected push, yeah. it, so they kind of dropped that very quickly, but even still, Capital is a really strong operator for Lockers, because you can even fire an arrow in to cover off, like, yeah, red, to make sure yeah. nobody can play behind the reinforcement, and even, you can smoke off, like, so many things with the arrows as well. Yeah, unfortunately now for Orglus, you can't bring Twitch on defense. So they could be bringing the Maestro on Bravo. Yeah, he's getting an Alden instead. You know, on this, it, it looks like a very, very standard setup, honestly, coming out from Orglus. Yeah, from Bank, Sonics. Bank's kind of been done, like, a lot, hasn't it, with basic setups? Um, Yeah, I mean, we've seen some kind of changes from Sonics as well. Like, Sonics didn't bring a smoke, which is normally pretty standard on ba Bank defense as well. So it looks like Orglus are just a lot more willing to play off of that defense. It looks like they're not holding blue at all. So, you know, the, the, you can make some change-ups there, and I think there's a, some of the minor change-ups you can make, and they're just going to be playing this a lot more defensively. And I think, honestly, you don't really have to waste time on blue, but with a Thatcher ban, it does allow you to put a lot more utility on that side. I always see Bank Basement very comparable to Clubhouse Basement. They play out very similar, where it's a nice long time for the attackers to get set up. There's hatches that you need to open, and, and even look, like a Havana ban on Clubhouse favors the defenders as well. There's a lot of similar stuff. You know, you wait until the final couple of seconds, you have to bait out utility, you open up a wall that you can try and plant behind. There's a lot of comparisons to it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I think there are a few, but Orgus should be able to play this pretty patiently. Especially with the fact that the Thatcher ban and you have Ikeda, but we do see Gumphy has managed to brought the Maverick here, but Makarov is going to open what things up done? onto his teammate of Trippin. It's a blood sacrifice. You sacrifice your Kade, that should give you a bit of a boost of power to the rest of you. Wow, is this an NA thing? Uh, I think it's a, a regional thing, honestly. Uh, just well. an NA thing, yeah? I mean, we've seen it in EU as well yeah, from Yeah, I can understand why there's been no major winners for NA. <laughs> Full Soul going to be pulsing out. He's going to know that Gumphy is, of course, going to be trying to open up this hatch. Doesn't seem too decisive what he wants to do here right now. He just needs to get the hell out of there and go straight back to gold. Yeah, you just need to play your time, bro. You give, literally, you kind of captain the ship. You have to control everything. The Rotate tried to come in, but Slevin's, why is he holding the flank if there's a Nomad? DZ does that as well, like a lot. They, they, they probably a Twitch up there to hold that angle. It's very, very, very hard to contest indeed. But he's going to pick up a freebie out of it, so he got his frag, and now it's already at 3v5. Oglis not looking too good here on this defense, but Bravo Dog's still here. He still gets Aldo, and we still have plenty of planted on Aldo, actually, as well, as well as a little bit of info. Yep, still information being gathered by the Pulse. 
but Sonics, they have the clear man advantage and also utility. They've hardly used any of their Sophia stuff and even their Affixiate and Bolts. They have used very little of it. So now for Orgolus, they need to try and play off the Franks and the maneuverability that they still have access with the Pulse, but there goes the Cap Towers in towards the red is what we kind of discussed. That could be a big going factor. First Toxic Babe gets tossed out, and well, there's only one more left for him. That's actually used a second as well, so just one more, but a C4 primed and cooked and ready to go. But Sonics know they have plenty of time to play with. Yeah, so another smoke is going to go out, and Orgul's playing very, very patiently here. They haven't actually used their C4 just yet, but it's not going to be able to be used. Neptune takes Force off the board, and Bravo Dog still holding the very long angle, but Sonics is able to plant the Diffuser with no casualties. But as I say that, Bravo Dog does find his first kill of the round. Neptune goes down. This is still very winnable, I think. There's not actually that much utility left from Sonics to try and help them in this post part, but it is a 4v2. They have all the angles set up, and Bravo Dog and Timzy together are going to have to try and pick some up, but no, Bravo Dog is going to go down. It's all down to Timzy, but Slebin's going to pick up a freebie, and Sonics take round number seven off of a Slebin 3k as well. Yeah, he just held his angles, picking two of them off just from the hatch, giving that cover, and... Uh, it was just standards from Sonics, and even I think it was just a little bit too basic for Orgulus and what they were trying to go with. You just gave Sonics the go-ahead to do whatever they wanted. There was no roam game, there was not even an extension in towards server. All of you guys were just turtling on site, and that really doesn't give a whole lot for your team. You need to try and get out there and eliminate a big utility operator from Sonics. You know, if you take up the Capitan or Fia, you're looking in a great spot. Heck, you eliminate Firma or Maverick, that's a, that's a win, basically, for you. I think if the Cade had still been alive, they would have been able to waste a lot more time with that kind of more C4 denial coming out from them. But yeah, you are right, not being able to play that too aggressively. They just gave Sonics all the control that they need, didn't waste any of their utility, and they got absolutely hounded on site for it. But we're going to go to round number 8. It's going to be an upstairs defense. Ogle's clearly not happy with what was going on down there. They're going to go upstairs instead. And again, looking pretty standard from them, although no Maestro coming out from them. No Maestro, but then Doc has been brought into the fray of things. I would like to see both, because it feels as if the Maestro camera kind of gives you that information that you lack with not having the Echo, and, and even Valkyrie available, and Oracle's not choosing that operator. It's a bit strange, because we always kind of see her be picked for the top four especially, because it gives you that early information. And, well, we talked about the Tellers, how it was a very difficult bomb site to hold due to the verticality that you can provide in CEO. Works both ways with C4s from below. You know, we've seen extended holes towards that Tellers where they would set up shop, have a Valkyrie camera in sight, and then C4 the plant as it tries to bend through CEO. The yeah, Maker component is not a huge amount of intel right now. Yeah, there's not bring pretty in. much. So, we do still see a little bit of a roam game coming out from them in terms of Macro Robin Bravo Dog already getting a bit too aggressive with it. Super already taking a little bit of damage here, but not able to do too much with it. Bravo Dog actually still has a bulletproof camera in his back pocket here, which you'd think would go on to Kanto, but has <laughs> Where's he putting it? What's he doing with it? Put your utility down, bro. Come on. You, you need to be better at that kind of stuff. Uh, Orgless. No real extension roam game at the moment. Very calm on site. They do have the one odd roamer, but that's about it. Sonics look as if they're trying to play in towards the skylight. They can see them scoured around uh, the windows and, of course, in towards that skylight specifically. Mackerel's going to be the guy they need to target because he is a C4. If there is information being relayed to him just down division by his teammates, then he could end the plan. He could do some real damage from below. But once again, for Orgulus, they have gave Sonics the green light to go ahead and do whatever they want. There's no aggression from them. They're not putting any pressure on Sonics. They're happy enough just to do what they need to do, and that is take all the time they need, open up what they need to open mm. up, and then finally push in. Good droning as well coming out from Sonics. They're able to know that there is indeed a mozzie downstairs who is ready to play with that C4. Timzy's still playing aggressively onto janitors, but yeah, as you said, there's not really too much aggression coming out from August right now. Bravo Doc has done a little bit of peeking of his own, but... Not able to do too much of denial of that entry. He's got a bit of a nice angle onto this one wall that Sonics have managed to open up so far, but things still, so far, pretty slow for Orgles. The whole thing about Sonics and how they're playing it is they will take their time. They're very similar to what kind of space station do, and that is make sure everything is 
primed and ready to go for. Forceful did try a flank down into lobby to eliminate Capitao specifically, but there's a great cover that we need to see from more teams in towards that lobby. And well, Gonfi did get his just roars from it. Slevin fires on through with the LMG and don't even know what Mozzie was trying to attempt there. And it's another clean sweep for Sonic's Bravo Dog. He has been down, but they know where he is and it should be an easy frag for Ooh. whoever wants to go for it. The fuse are being planted. Bravo oh. misses his shots and Sonic's, they take that sweep. I really thought that Bravo Dog was gonna, was gonna you know, do some work there, but he was unable to do so, and Gonfi is just gonna finish him off. And Sonics are looking a little bit better here on their attack, so Bank attack aside with a Thatcher Habana ban? Oh, no, no, no. Both teams just can't defend. Right, okay. Sorry, my bad. Bravo Dog still leading the charge on 13, 13 and kills. 3, wow. but unfortunately doesn't have access to that Twitch on defense, and I really just think. If you can name a thing that's just going wrong here for Oglus, I honestly think that is it. They have no confidence in their ability to take gunfights here. Yeah, Bravo Dog's the only one, you know, we looked at that last round, we actually had to go at a bit of a tricky spawn kill where you can kind of bait them in by dropping down towards that dining area outside in the balcony, and you get a free kill, because nobody's really going to be ready for taking that engagement behind somebody who has a lot of cover. Uh, but for the rest of Orglis, I don't know, man. It looks very... Very scared, very fearful. You know, they know who Sonics are. They know what they're up against. A team which on the attacks can look deadly whenever everything goes to plan. The main thing about Sonics is this, whenever things don't go to plan, they lose one important operator, that book just goes out the window. They don't really know where to go from there. They stop, they splutter, they break down like a bad car. And I kind of feel the Orglis need to kind of utilize what they have going for them. That is Bravo Dog. Send them out there. Hey, take a friend with you. Take Makarov. Try and do something. Yeah, it just hasn't gone well for Oglis at all. They are going to go upstairs again, and but this time it's going to be Trippin who is going to be playing on the duck. I'm not... Ten seconds hmm. left. I, I mean, I like the, the, um, the Valkyrie pick we were saying about last round about Five how there wasn't too much info coming out from Oglis. But again, Trippin has decided not to put down his bulletproof camp. Not really sure why we're still doing this. But... Why is he hmm. doing this? Making bull oh. bullet holes just looking at the windows. So you can Put your camera down, bro. It's actually starting to trigger me. It's, it's like it's like the it's egg with free free ADSs, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah. what it's like. It's really oh, I don't know. It's not good. It's not good. Sonic's again just gonna just start out their pretty typical attack that they've been doing pretty much every single time now. And yeah, as we said. If you just let them have their time, if you just let them have their utility, they are just going to walk all over you. There needs to be some sort of aggression from Orglis here, but we hopefully will see that come down in this round. I'm pretty confident that we will, honestly. So Sonics look to be set up the exact same way. Window repel in towards the north with the cover being added by Gumphy. And the rest of them will try and push in towards Skylight and open up the main breach. There is a Kaid, which Slappin, more importantly, will have to try and take care of, I think. You know, he's there to try and eliminate, or even Neptunes can do. He has the upside in repel, and he... Did he manage to get that? I think he did. It's from... It's actually attached from below. Just, like, in archives, I think, somewhere. Ah, yes, so I see now. They're going to have to go yeah. down there and be no, able to no, do no, something No, 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 just the one. But it was just the one ah, okay, that okay, was there. Okay. So they did manage to get it. And we'll see Goddess Mio to open up the wall. I think they're very, very cautious about wanting to push that below side because we've got Valkyrie roaming down below. That could be a bit of a doozy. Just lurking. But then again, there is an attacker lurking in lobby as well. That will be the Maverick, who doesn't really have a big thing going for them in this bomb site specifically. Sure, Maverick could be handy if there's a bandit, but bandit's a risky one whenever they specifically know that Sonic's pressure the window game very hard with Slabin going in with, you know, the, the crossbow being able to sanction off different areas with the fire and smoke bolts like. And honestly, you think about Capitao, his whole job is to literally deny, like, just everything that defenders try and push in towards. That's his one job, is just to make sure nobody comes anywhere near the planter. Timsey, ah. you ran into the fire. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, Timsey had no options there, because if he ran out of the door, he would have been fragged out of the edge. I would have taken him off the board, but taking off the board, Super is going to take the force fall down. Trippin is going to start to frag back, and so is Bravo Dog as well. Both picking up kills from themselves, but flashbangs come down in heavy amounts, and that plant should start to come down from Sonic. Bravo Dog attempted to deny that, but... 
You know, doesn't have too much info on what's going on in the site. There's not a lot of info really from either side. As Trippin tries to peek out and tries to do something. Bravo Dog still convinces someone in the site right now. Tries to peek out. Gonfi shuts him down. And another one for Sonics as they take round number nine. Beautifully done from them. Yeah, it's just basic and standard stuff. There's really nothing that is too in depth from Orglis. They are playing the way that Sonics want them to. And that is simple. Keeping it as passive as they can. And that's great for a team who want to utilize their operators and their executes. You know, you're bringing that capital for a reason. Uh, prioritizing the plant hasn't really been a big thing for Sonics that round. You know, we kind of seen God is trying to come in and get the plant down. But then if you've even seen that final 20 seconds, it was picked back up. But Slebin had no intention. They just played for the frags. I think at that point, they used quite a lot of their utility and they knew where both of the defenders were. So there wasn't a massive need for them to want to even do that. So, we'll see how it does go down. Let's move into round number 10. We'll see a Teller's Office and Archives defense, and Ogles are just trying to do every single defense and every single play they have in their book. I think, honestly, if they just go back downstairs and they just don't TK, I think they could have that a lot more successful, but we won't see that happen just yet. We will see Teller's Office, and Ogles will see if they can make it work, but this is a very critical round for them. Oh, this, this is gonna make or break them. I kind of feel, even if Orglis win this round, I still feel that they have to go to like a more basic one, which shoots, uh, suits Sonics a lot more in terms of the capabilities that they have, if they line up with operators and the kind of positioning that they play around with. But Tellers can be pretty roamer and heavy. You have multiple extensions that you can even go for. Heck, I've seen an open area extend in towards a top floor janitor's hold. That's a bit of a wild one. Have you ever seen that one before? And I kind of feel as if for Orglis, they should go for the gun heavy kind of let's just kill them strategy. Five seconds left. Yeah, potentially. Potentially could go down that way, but we'll have a look what Sonics want to do and their kind of take, but... Mm, from Orglis' lineup, it kind of seems they want to just play this more aggressively, right? And they do have a lot of roamers on the board. They have a lot of rotations up on the board. I think this is how you should be really playing in this situation right now. So I'm glad to see that a bit of adaptation come out indeed. But no! Oh, the whiff coming out from the Legion and already Macro from Bravo Dog off the board. This roaming is just being deleted right now from some great drone work and some great roam clearing. And already four members off the board. The plant's down. What just happened? Yeah, that was an Orglis on their badge. Drone. Sonic's went for a rush, which nobody was expecting with the playstyle that they've been showing us this game. And well, it's worked a treat for them. All of them came in free janners, and they were in as quick as we could say, oh, look, the round started. So they had a drone top square from Neptunes, and they had a drone in blue that got destroyed from Goddess. You could imagine there was a drone also in staff open area, and yeah, they'd just be able to spot out every single Roman that was there and just took control instantly. And yeah, great rush coming out from Sonics and just put them immediately on the board and that's put them on match point as well. Just one round of wait from bringing in map number one. This is looking awful for Oculus right now. Oh yeah, that's them done. That's them. Bank lost. Uh, this was like really the only one I would have kind of given them to to win out of the three. I don't think club's going to go well for them, especially with the way that Sonics have already kind of shown and club and bank have very similar aspects to it with the slow methodical play that you have to kind of take with that and just everything kind of synchronizing. And Sonics have just, they have that sync compared to Orglis. You know, you look at the attacks from Orglis, they were pretty messy, pretty sloppy. Sonics did have a couple of bad defense, but as you can see on the attacks, they just look like more of a team. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> To be fair to Ogles here, they are playing with two subs and a coach on top of that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Forceful is their coach, and he's 1 and 8 right now. So, potentially some... Yeah, the coach special. Yeah, it's in the coach special. Um, yeah, like, to, to be fair to Ogles, like you're playing, like, a map that you have to be really coordinated for to be successful in a defense. And it's going to be really hard for them to find that coordination, but they are holding blue more aggressively this time with the warden as well. Yeah, we got the man in the suit coming in. Uh, so you've seen from Sonics, they did a similar thing with the extension in towards the stairs. They used an Ella, which oh, provided did more it. of a fragging force. Hey, look, he got a kill. He ran, ran out on the Park Alley spawn peak and he actually managed to get Zofia as well. That is a massive pick as well. That's going to make that blue clear so much harder for Sonics. Still Capitao though, so 
I still feel as if they can deal with that, being able to simply peek in and fire off yeah. the warden, forcing the Meaver up yeah. or down the stairs. That should be a simple thing. But it's just a shotgun I kind of think that they will struggle with because it is a big gun that, you know, has put a many, many players down rushing in towards staircases. Uh, you know, it's SS shotgun for a reason. It's just too good because British OP. <laughs> oh, and this nice. is where Americans yeah. entered the uh, 1812 comment. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, but we'll have a look match point, of course, still to Sonics, but this is a much better start coming out from August, much more aggressive, something that we were talking about earlier, like holding blue, being aggressive, going for those spawn piece, going for those picks, and looks like Macro will be able to find out it's actually going to be a backside take maybe here. Yeah, I really hope they don't go for that. Mm. I don't think they will. I think they're smarter than this. Yeah. I don't mind a backside take, but you know, it has its place, and if you know there's a pulse on the board, you're going to know that it's not exactly what you want to do. The three-man rotate main says, though, could come out as Makarov finds that kill onto Gomfi and Trippin, able to try and push this out a little bit more as well, but this is not looking good at all for Sonics. They're in a 3v5. They lost a lot of their utility. Yeah, they've lost the Maverick, more importantly, which could have been a great way of even opening up a back hatch. And if they wanted to slip in towards that option, that could have been great for them. Um, Orglis, they took the fight to Sonics. They were not afraid to hold back their punches. They are now chucking them at full strength. And Sonics, they've stopped, like we talked about. God of Stars push in, get that one kill to Maestro, but the refrag should be there, and yes, it will be. And now it's a 4v2, and look, Smoke straight away, taking the initiative. Up the stairs he goes, but there's the air jab to lock him down, and super, he will try and get onto it. Slabin has ended up in garage somehow, and, well, he's just probably going to get slaughtered, and yep, there it goes. And Well, Orglis, great from them, the gun skill. Yeah, absolutely, charm. absolutely beautiful coming up from Orglis. I definitely like from Timzy as well to take the initiative, as you said. He did move up, May says he did get air jab, but he just continued to move up, and super had absolutely no idea he was there. Good coordination from Sonics, I thought, at the end to try and pull that in and try and go for that garage push, but and ultimately it was unsuccessful, and we'll still see Sonics on match point, but a little bit more life science coming out from Orglis and a little bit more of an aggressive hold downstairs. So we'll see what they want to go to next. It looks like a Teller's Office and Archive State coming out from them. This was an absolute disaster last time. Yeah, it was a rush from Sonics. Uh, can I feel for Orglis? that they need to do the exact same thing on lockers, and that is just play without a brain. Go for it. Put it in the bin, and just frag out with your little skulls, because we know that they have the potential, and really any NA Challenge League team has so much gun skill behind them. It's just the coordination strategies that they kind of get left behind from. And whenever Sonics, we looked at it, we're not ready for that aggressive standpoint. Perhaps they will be now. Uh, Gonfrey's on the ash, so we already know that means trouble. He could do. He definitely yeah, does serve that kind of entry role coming out when they don't need the Maverick. So, potentially there could be a really, really heavy rush coming out. We'll see how it does go down as we move again. It is going to be match point, but we're going to be moving into round number 12. So, Orglus, it is do or die for them here. And as you said, they need to win bank and push this to Decider if they want to stand a chance of bringing this in. It's intense. He's shaking. Because, I mean, you, if Super's going against a guy who doesn't even reinforce, he just jumps out if we go for a spawn peek and he gets the kill. I mean, yep. yeah, that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, even more terrifying is Capcan on the board. So they've specifically brought that just to make sure Sonics don't rush in again. No, I like it. Uh, I don't think Sonics will rush again. They're going to play it a lot more safe and slow. No Buck or Sledge has really made an entryway into this map specifically, where we would kind of see like a Buck being brought on bank specifically for the mid floor. Mm. It's interesting though, because Gonfi does play a decent amount of Sledge as well, so. Okay. <laughs> this match chat is getting very Let's interesting. Let's keep it PG, guys. Certain, but, oh, he's going to be forced for the coach special. He's going to pick up a double frank, oh, but no, it's going to be Bravo Dog who helps him out there. And the entire of that Sonic's rush, as you said, that would not come, has come and been shut down. Yeah, that, I wasn't expecting that to come because it wasn't going to work whenever Capcan's being brought. And again, Sonic's. Just why? Why have you done this? Just rush. That's the strategy. Ah, oh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> but for those of you who don't know, Blan is one of the main people here. 
who is normally on the main roster for Orgles. However, his power is constantly coming in and out, so he's not playing this matchup. Instead, you see Forceful, Makarov, and of course Timzy coming in to sub in for the various, various members of Orgles who couldn't come up today. But Forceful wow. has actually sent us to OT. Where is the commitment and the passion, huh? Yeah, apparently, it doesn't just doesn't come through on 4 p.m. at Eastern, unfortunately. But we're going to go to overtime, and it's going to be Orglis who take the defense first, of course. As we go to a lockers and CTV room, this was definitely the most successful defense for them. Yeah, it was. Their lockers should be their most successful because of the kind of general gist of the bans. Hasn't really led us to believe that. We have seen eight attacker-sided wins and only four defense, which is not the norm. Uh, only two lockers as well in towards that, one open and one tellers. So it has been a much more varied match of bank than the norm would kind of suggest it to be. Hmm. So, don't forget, overtime, only three rounds of overtime. There's no uh, infinite overtime. Oh, why not? I was ready. I've got my sleeping bag with me, James. Really? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm here for the night. Now we could have done it. We could have done it. But there's going to be no infinite overtime for now. So, you know, you'd think that Orgles should be able to bring this in now. They've had a bit more practice on the defense. They've definitely been able to bring it in in the last two rounds. We do see an overtime coming in now, and we'll see if Sonics, what they want to do here on their attack. You know, if you want to go back stats-wise, you'd think that Sonics should be able to take this, because they've now got two attacks. It's been mostly attack-sided. Makarov, again, going to go for the spawn peak with the UMP hollow as well. He's going to get this, probably. Oh! The fact that Slabin read into that, is even more incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, no, it, it's really good from from Sliven to be able to do that. But fortunately, not going to be getting a kill. But you know, still being able to fall off, still being able to have that nitro up, still still really good for Orgles because also Pulse isn't going to be in an aggressive position most of the round. He's probably going to be playing gold or yeah, maybe even blue. So he should be fine, even if he is low HP. No warden this time though from Orgles, which was well, something that they did bring. Which had a, a kind of impact, because it did mean that Sonic couldn't really push in towards that. I've actually seen them not even attempt to try and take server stairs, and instead they went for the kind of weird, let's push main stairs, garage, drop hatch kind of go-to thing, which they had going for them. Uh, but now, since they do have all five members, which they didn't have last time, because they did lose uh, their Sophia, and then I think they lost, what, their Maverick after that, yep. they lost players early on, which meant that they didn't have the utility to actually take server stairs. I feel if they do have everybody now, they will go for it. I like that from Gumphy, throwing a flashbang so that when he opens the hatch, he doesn't get nitroed. Pretty smart from Gumphy coming out there. They should be able to get both the hatches open, and they have done, of course, as well. Slevin put in on the flank watch as well, like he was last time. They've left hatches soft, so somebody hasn't went for reinforcements, and if I have to guess, it's going to be the pulse who spawn killed, if anybody. Um, so that gives Sonics another option. But Makarov is still alive, and he can create some real havoc with this information being gathered. So Sonics, if he sees, like, just one guy drop elevator, that guy will probably be jumped on, like, you know, like a pack of wild wolves onto <laughs> a wild deer that's been stuck in an elevator, uh, if you can imagine that scenario. You'll probably yeah. see if it does happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just there more as a threat, but yeah, you are right, if he did jump down there, he will get pounded Ooh. on, but that could also be a good distraction coming out, but it's going to be Bravo Dog who picks up the first frag of the round. Slevin goes down already, the cap is out off the board as Neptune tries to refrag him, and he will be able to do so and regain that garage control as well, which is pretty essential if they want to do this push. Gonfi attempts to shoot the C4 and the pulls, but not able to get the kills on either as Super pushes up. He takes down Forceful on that blue stairs side. Yeah, it looks to be that Pulse is now trapped inside of Elevator, and that was open. I wonder if we're going to see a long rotation from somebody from Sonic, because they could easily do that and kill the Pulse, because clearly Gumphy knows where he is, but he's just going to walk in, oh. has the M4, and will frag on the Timsy. There's a the man peeks out an Elevator, and gets turned on as well. Trip it now, one versus three, all to do inside of the Vault. Super holding off the cross as Diffuser gets planted by Goddess. There's the peak, but still... Nothing comes off it, and Gumphy should be able to hold it. Oh, oh but he's going to go for the revive. But now both of them are trapped <laughs> in the elevator. I've seen poor oh, life decisions no. in my life, but that, that one does take the cake. And, uh, and well, there you go. Sonic's lock out of rounds for them. Trippin just signed his death warrant by saving his teammate by doing that. What an idiot. <laughs> Sonic's is going to take the round on the attack. Orglus does have an opportunity to bring this in themselves, but it is going to be a bit of an uphill battle now. They 
have been pretty dominant on this attack though, and Bravo Dog definitely doing that entry on the Twitch, and I would be surprised if we didn't see him on it. And there we go, immediately picked. Yep, straight on. 16 and 7 for him so far, and Forceful, the coach special. Did you order that? I don't think Orglus ordered the coach special. <laughs> It's unfortunate, but like, you know, uh, Fossil's definitely been kind of like doing his job during the attack rounds. He's been able to get hatches open as well. He's been playing the more specialized flex roles as well, uh -huh. like Maverick and Ella, and and he's been playing Warden as well. Like, definitely playing roles that potentially other team other teammates might be uncomfortable with playing as well. So, you know, he's he's taking the sacrifice. So no Ella from Sonics. And that was like an alt prayer that kind of was a pinnacle of their server hole that they had going on. And Slabin is now on the Jaeger. So them and Gonfi, they kind of switch roles a lot. And if you look mm -hmm. at kind of season Attack stats, they are both like the most game. picked operator and defense has been Jaeger. They kind of switch it back and forth and whoever takes what role, you know, if Ella then it would be Slabin on the Ella and then Gonfi back in the Jaeger. But now it's Valk. It's going to be Gonfi in the Valk and then Slabin on the Jaeger. So they will take turns in who plays what. So this is going to be, I think, what, the first Valkyrie that we've had this month match which is really surprising for bank because there's a lot of great valkyrie uh, cameras that you can actually sneak in towards we did have a valkyrie coming out from august when they went to the ceo defense but other than that you are right we haven't seen too much valkyrie yeah there was that yeah that one one yeah. um but there literally there has been such lackluster from sonics in terms of information i would say yeah that is true uh, there I mean, they're bringing a pulse again, so, you know, pretty standard exactly. from them. But I think that this server hold just was not working for them at all. And that they just either just didn't have any info, which now they brought, mm -hmm. or that they were wasting a lot of potential on this blue hold, which they were just immediately getting fragged out of. But it's we'll see how things go down as we move to overtime. Match point for Sonics. It's not even like the fact that they were missing the Valkyrie and, you know, Pulse is there. Pulse can, again, kind of do the job of Valkyrie to give that information as the plant comes in. But it feels that Valkyrie would help them a lot more in the post-plant because if you have that information, because Pulse isn't going to still be pulsing over the bombs planted. He's going to have to go out and get some kills and try and retake. That Valkyrie camera could help them in the late game. And again, Sonics have not been bringing smoke here at all, which you might say should be pretty standard if you wanted to play this a little bit more passively. And that, you know, the smoke gives you 30 seconds of plant denial, so, you know, you can play that very, very patiently. With They do have three C4s, though, however, so that should be able to put in a decent amount of plant denial for themselves. You could argue that, you know, this is very nitro-heavy meta as well. So, opens up in towards the A hatch. And straight away, Orglis, they're in server. No mucking about. They're straight into the heart of it. And they're already going to try and look to start burning utility. So for Sonics, they may be on for a potential late game flank. You know, I could honestly, I could see Gonfi and Slevin both running up main stairs, playing as a duo, and trying to retake in towards Tellers. There's no Nomad for Orglis. Not really a lot of C4s as well. There is, of course, Maverick, who will be lurking in towards the main stairs area. That's kind of where we've seen Forceful play before, giving access and the cover. And the Diffuser is trying to get baited out, but this is kind of standard from what Orgleson to do now. If you're taking it fast and aggressive and you know, then you just need to go for it. And, well, that was missed time from Timsey. He just misses that one. And Gonfi, that's his C4. And in the quick peek up as well, information just being gathered by Neptune. It works a charm. This is where they're lacking the Kabatau to try and help them. And, well, it has put Sonics in the driver's seat for this final minute. So I've been waiting for any kind of take to be coming from the backside as well. No Nitro going out just yet. Pulse being very, very, very patient with this. They've got plenty of info as well up into that server side, and everything seems pretty locked down here for Sonics right now, with only 40 seconds left on the clock for August to try and do something. Looks like they're going to need to get a little bit more aggressive with it. Nitro should be going out, and that should score a kill. Trippin goes down, and it's going to be a 2v4. Makarov is going to try and rotate down to blue instead, as Fossil still playing on the hatch, not able to do too much here. Still only one flashbang remaining as well. Not a lot of utility, not a lot of time, and a lot of players for Ogles here to try and bring this in, but that's going to be a kill from Forceful from the hatch. Gonfi goes down. They should be able to try and plant this now. There's not too much plant to now coming out, but no, it's going to be a really long angle from Goddess to try and shut this down. He, she is going to get the down, but no, it's going to be Sonics who take round number 14, and they take the map. That's going to be good halves coming out, and I think, honestly, that is series over for Orglis. That was their big yeah. opportunity to take this to Decider. Clubhouse is a really good map for Sonics. And even though they haven't played it too much, it's because people just ban it against them instantly. No pro team will ever willingly take Sonics to Clubhouse. 
But we'll have to see how they continue on, because that's a bank out of the way, but still one more map to come. Clubhouse, ready to go. We'll see. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.